Honor Guard at Ten Hut, Honor Guard, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor Guard. <coughs> Order. Oh. Now with the uh, opening prayer, Don Albert. If you're not under arms, please uncover. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here this day in remembrance of those who fell and who served in the Vietnam conflict. We collectively beseech and petition you to enable their eyes to be opened upon the warmth and glory of your love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless this remembered ceremony and look with favor and understanding upon those remembered here today. For those servicemen and women who have passed, may your eternal light shine upon them always. And for us gathered here today, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you look with favor and understanding as we pay tribute to their sacrifices made for the benefit of free men and women everywhere. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Good afternoon. My name is Justin Latini. I'm a Vietnam wartime veteran and president of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 207. Before I begin, I would like to welcome my fellow Vietnam War veteran, especially those who served in combat we are so grateful for your service. I would also like to extend a welcome to the family and friends here today, and finally our invited guests, local leaders, and mayor. Today we gather to celebrate Vietnam War Veterans Day, officially signed into law 2017 by former President Donald Trump. A half century ago, we didn't know that the first deployment would lead to the deaths of more than 58,000 U.S. service members. As many of you are aware, we come here each year to remember that although the war is over, we must take time out each year to mark this date so that others may know what happened and those who, shall, who serve shall never be forgotten. Today is also a sad day. Today is the last day we celebrate these ho this holiday here at City Hall with the completion of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall at Bicentennial Park, I hope that we can hold our celebrations at the wall in the future. I would also like to thank the mayor and all the previous mayors who have supported us in the past, and to the veteran service officer who is a true, true leader of veterans issues, Ray Haig, who without his support, leadership, these events may never have taken place. In the past, 207 would meet at Kennedy Park with just 207 members and a few passerbys to celebrate this day. Then Ray Haig invited us to hold these ceremonies at City Hall, where it has grown into today's celebration. Today's celebration is to remember those who served, but especially for those who are still with us. The men and women who today are being remembered were from small towns and big cities. They came home and raised families. They were blue collar workers, small business owners, went into politics or law, and became teachers, firemen, and so on. Each one of us came home to live a life that we hope those on the wall would be proud of. We mark this date not only to remember those who did not come home, but stand proud to look another in the eye and call them brother. It is important that all veterans who served during the war are now listed as wartime veterans and not labeled as era veterans. I've never heard of a Korean era or a World War II era vet. 
Organizations just for those who served during this war became known as Vietnam Veterans of America. Our national motto is never again will one generation of veterans abandon another. I and all those who served, whether in a jungle, in the air, on bases around the world, we all served with honor. To those who were on the ground, especially those names on the wall, we hold a special place for you and how you served. I will leave you with a veteran's poem. I've read it on other occasions, but today, in these times, I think they need to be heard. For many are claiming to ensure your rights or justice. We need to again set the, straight, the record straight. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us freedom of religion. It is soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, and who allows the protester to burn the flag. May God bless you. May God bless my brothers. Thank you very much. This time I'd like to bring up Ray Hag. Uh, thank you, Commander. And uh, thank you all for attending our ceremony here today, which uh, pretty much starts our ceremonies for the year uh, for veterans uh, monuments and things throughout the city. But um, the Vietnam veterans uh, hold a special place, of course, in my heart, being part of that generation. And um, I'd just like to take you back to any given Monday a little over 50 years ago, right here, right at that curb site, a bus would pick people up and take them away that had been drafted. And unfortunately, 23 of those Fall River residents uh, did not come back. They died in combat. And I'm so proud to be part of a city that's recognized it every year and is now about to dedicate a replica of the Vietnam Wall right here on our waterfront. They say, never forget, our residents and our elected officials and everyone has not forgotten and they're to be commended for that. With that said, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor, Paul Coogan. First of all, it's a privilege to be here today, but I do have to introduce a few of our colleagues that are also with us. Um, to my right, we have uh, three state representatives. They are tremendous supporters of all veterans' issues from here to Beacon Hill and back. Carol Fiola, Alan Sylvia, and Paul Schmidt. Also representing um, Senator Rogers is Caitlin Rowley. And um, we have our two chiefs, uh, Chief Lynch and Chief Cardoza. Both are doing a uh, stand-up job for the city and always support these type of events for the community. National Vietnam War Veterans Day is, is today on March 29th. It honors the men and women who served and sacrificed during the longest conflict in U.S. history. On March 29th of 73, combat and combat support units withdrew from South Vietnam Generations later, veterans, this time period, is gaining the respect that was not so freely given to them upon their return. They are now earning and getting that respect every day, involving five presidents, crossing nearly two decades, and 500,000 U.S. military personnel were involved. And I will read a quote to you. On behalf of a grateful city, it is a privilege to thank and honor you for your service, valor, and sacrifice when our country needed you most. 
And I want to again thank everyone for coming out today. Sergeant Damaris uh, didn't have his glasses, so he asked me to read the proclamation, and I can see why. It's really uh, small print, but, uh, you know, as uh, combat veterans, we always have each other's back, and I'm stand, happy to stand in. Proclamation reads, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the proclamation, whereas <clears throat> today we recognize the more than three million Americans who served in the Vietnam War and the nearly 58,000 men and women who died or were lost during the war. And whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and our way of life, and whereas the, their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifice serves as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim March 29, 2021, to be Vietnam War Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take appropriate to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance, given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 28th, 9th day of March, this year 2021, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 244. Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen Toledo, Lieutenant Governor. William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. Uh, thank you for allowing me to participate in this day. I think it's important that it honors the warriors and not the war. Thank you. Please uncover for the closing prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessings bestowed upon those remembered today, those gathered here and upon this ceremony. Heavenly Father, keep there and our families in your kind care. Bless them and comfort them and in, their, and in our time of remembrance. We ask this we ask thy blessing upon this service as we depart. Grant unto us your love, grace, and abiding peace. Amen. We will now have the honor guard perform their tasks. Stand by.
you may release your doves. They will be accompanied home by a platoon of homing pigeons, which are also serving in combat many two, World War I and World War II. Thank you.